What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Kangas and today I'm going over our challenger coaches 10 broken bot laners that you should be abusing in your solo queue gains for some free juicy LP. So hit that sub button and let's hop right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got the queen of the bot lane, Jinx. Jinx has held a role as one of the best AD carries for quite some time now. Even with the bug fix that ended up nerfing her, she's still extremely powerful and a pretty safe blind pick. She's got a strong early game, a nice mid game, and one of the strongest late games possible. If you're looking for a hyper carry that lets you do it all, Jinx is most definitely the pick for you. For your runes, we actually found that taking Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coupe de Grave, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter will offer you a consistently powerful playstyle. But feel free to switch up Conqueror for lethal tempo here and there if the enemy isn't super tanky. As for your items, you'll be rushing Berserker's Greaves as soon as possible. These boots give Jinx a ton of power early game because of her Q, so do not underestimate this buy. Also, the movement speed helps you dodge those annoying skill shots. Afterwards, you'll be looking to build a Kraken Slayer, Ruinance Hurricane, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and then top it off with a GA for additional survivability or a Mortal Reminder for some anti-heal. Sometimes you can also build Rapid Fire Cannon or Phantom Dancer instead of the Ruinance just in case you need either additional range or just single target damage respectively. Finally, for your summoner spells, you'll be taking Flash and Heal in most games, but don't be afraid to take Cleanse when versus long range CC like Leona, Sejuani, or even Lissandra. Also, you'll be starting the game with the usual Doran's Blade and a Potion, but if you really need it, go ahead and take a Doran's Shield instead. Up next, we got one of Riot's infamous 200 year 80 carries, and no, not a Felios. Today, we're talking about Samira making her presence known as a 1v9 machine, who's also able to keep her health topped off through massive amounts of healing. While she's not in the overpowered state anymore, she's still someone who's able to dominate teamfights through proper decision making and fast paced engages. Overall, if you're a thrill seeker who loves to weave in and out of fights, Samira is one that will help satisfy the daredevil inside you. But Samira is one of the harder 80 carries to master, so if you're struggling picking her up, go check out ProGuides.com and talk with one of our coaches. They'll walk you through exactly how you should play her laning phase, mid game, and also the late game team fights. And on top of that, we also have really cool courses from pro players, so if you're just interested in learning more about the game and how pros think, you can also check those out too. Anyway, for Samira's summoner spells, you'll be taking Flash and Heal, with the option of taking Exhaust versus certain matchups like Draven or Kai'Sa. As for your runes, you'll be going Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coupe de Grab, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. These runes will give you a strong mid to late game. If you feel like you need a bit more help early on though, don't be afraid to take Boots and Biscuits instead so that you can have an easier time in lane. Either way, you'll be starting off the game with a Doran's Blade and a Potion. But keep in mind that Doran's Shield is also extremely powerful on Samira because of her extremely short range. If you're in a poke heavy lane, you can also pick this up to keep yourself healthy. As for the rest of your items, you'll be picking up a Shield Bow, Defensive Boots of your choice, Collector, Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, and then top off the build with Lord Dominic's Regards for extra armor pen, GA for survivability, Mortal Reminder for anti-heal, or Mercurial Scimitar for dealing with pesky champions like Malzahar. Tristana has become well known for her powerful early game engage thanks to the creation of her Halo Blades build. She still reigns supreme as one of the 80 carries with the strongest early game since she's able to completely nuke either the 80 carry or the support in a matter of seconds as soon as she hits level 2. This makes Tristana a massive threat to anyone trying to scale during lane as she's able to easily punish them, take their turret, and then just outscale them as the game goes on. Overall, she's a nice combination of Samira and Jinx's playstyles while still being her own unique character. For her summoners, you'll be taking Flash and Heal every game. As for your runes, since you're looking a hard win early game, you'll be taking Halo Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Triumph, and Legend Bloodline. These runes synergize extremely well with your kit, specifically Halo Blades, as they allow you to jump towards the enemy and nearly instantly pop your explosive charge. And that's a ton of damage early in the game and should not be underestimated. You'll start the game with a standard potion and Doran's Blade, and as for the rest of your items, you're picking up a Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and finish it off with a Mortal Reminder for Anti-Heal, GA for additional survivability, or a course Mercurial Scimitar if you feel like you need the Anti-CC. Overall, you're looking to snowball your lead early, but it will take some practice to learn your damage. That being said, do not be afraid to play it safe too. Justana still scales extremely well, it's just that you'll do a lot better with some extra gold under your belt from those extra kills. And speaking of well-known champions, we can't forget to mention Kai'Sa. This champion single-handedly had players in every role up in arms, and she's able to have an extremely versatile build path, snowball is pretty hard, and she's also super safe with her ult and invisibility. Overall, Kai'Sa strikes fear into a ton of players, as she's a great assassin who can easily carry fights on her own, while still making sure to avoid any enemy engages or assassins that stand in her way. For your summoners, you'll be taking flash and heal in almost every lane. But feel free to take exhaust into matchups where you'll be dueling the enemy AD carry a lot, especially when facing somebody like Samira who might do the same. 
As for your runes, you'll be going Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Magical Footwear, and Biscuits. Dagon Footwear and Biscuits have become the meta for Kaisa since it provides her a safer early game and allows her to play far more aggressive without losing too much health. You'll be starting out the game with a Potion and Doran's Blade, and it's not really advisable to go Doran's Shield on Kaisa since it stunts your Q Evolve, but it is an option in extreme cases. For the rest of your items, you're looking to pick up Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Collector, Rune Ants, Infinity Edge, and then top it off with GA, or Dominic's Regards, or Immortal Reminder. Keep in mind, Kaisa looks to get her Q Evolve ASAP. That means be sure to pick up a Pickaxe, Noon Quiver, and a Serrated Dirk for your early game power spike as soon as you have this Evolve. You're significantly stronger than your enemy, and you also get a ton of wave clear. Up next, we got Varus. Varus has slowly been creeping into the meta with multiple powerful builds. His ability to consistently win lane as well as scale for the rest of the game makes him someone who is extremely difficult to shut down. Besides being an immobile carry, he offers a ton of bursts, DPS, utility, versatility, and more. I mean, what else could you want from an AD carry? Overall, if you want a combination of Lethality Sivir with Ash's utility, then Varus is definitely a champion that you should try out. For your summoners, you're taking Flash and Heal every game, unless you're versus somebody like Leona or Ash, in which case be sure to take Cleanse instead. For your runes, you're also taking Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. While Varus does have three meta builds at the moment, we're covering his Lethality build as it offers the strongest laning phase and overall is a much easier playstyle that can guarantee a win. You'll start the game with a Potion and Doran's Blade, and as for the rest of your build, you'll get Dust Blade, Lucidity Boots, Mana Mune, Serolda's Grudge, Edge of Night, and then finish off your build with GA, Collector, or Kempunk Chainsword. But before we continue, we got our question of the day. For today's question, what is your favorite off-meta bot laner to play at the moment? Personally, I've been enjoying abusing Cho'Gath with a Senna support. You farm as the Cho'Gath, but then the Senna just harasses your late opponents and you stack up endlessly and then you can get free kills. Really fun to try, you should check it out. Anyway, let me know your answers in the comments down below and let's hop back into the video. Next up is one of my least favorite champions in the entire game. We got the Poisonous Rat that was unironically made famous for someone's toxicity. Twitch was actually introduced into Season 11 with a powerful AP build that allowed for anti-engage, high amounts of true damage, and overall a strong roaming support if you don't want to play him AD. With his AP ratios getting nerfed, while it is still somewhat viable, Twitch has found high amounts of success with the new AD items and has slowly climbed his way to the top of lots of AD carry tier lists. Overall, if you love hyper carry champs like Jinx or Aphelios, you can also give Twitch a try. Just not in my games, please. This guy tilts me. For your runes, you're taking Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend of Alacrity, Coupe de Gras, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery. Be sure to take Flash and Heal as your summoner spells unless you're extremely confident in your damage with Twitch, and you can actually take Ignite for some cheesy assassination kills. Again, just not in my games. You'll be starting the game with a Potion and Doran's Blade, but if you need some additional sustain, feel free to take two Potions and a Doran's Ring instead. As for the rest of your items, you're building Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Runian's Hurricane, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and then finish it off with a Mortal Reminder, Orc, or Guardian Angel, depending on the situation. Ezreal has slowly been making his presence known in the meta. With many extremely strange build paths, lots of players are learning how to play with the new Ezreal and his amazing power spikes. While he's still a pretty strong late game menace, a lot of his power sits in his ability to abuse Sheen early on in lane and also look to win early fights with its power. Alongside this, he of course has high amounts of mobility, long range damage, and an extremely safe laning phase. If you're looking for a safe caster to carry, then Ezreal is the explorer that you should no doubt add to your roster. For your runes, there's not much being changed for Ezreal. You're going the usual Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coupe de Gras, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence, along with Flash and Heal as your summoner spells. You can take Teleport if you really want to, but it's just not as good as Heal in most cases. You'll be starting the game with a Health Potion and Doran's Blade, unless you're in an extremely safe lane. And then feel free to start with two Health Potions and a tier instead so that you can speed up your scaling. As for the rest of your items, you'll build Essence Reaver, Lucidity Boots, Mana Mune, Dust Blade, Serolda's Grudge, and Ravenous Hydra or Kempunk Chainsword. Keep in mind that you can actually pick up Tiamat early on, just don't finish the item until later since you don't really need the rest of the stats. Also, if you opted for a Doran's Blade start, be sure to pick up a tier as quickly as you can. So if you like an extremely powerful yet utility heavy AD carry, you'll want to pick up the Artistic Marksman Jin. Jin was known at the beginning of the season for his extremely powerful combo of Gale Force and Collector as he was able to deal a ton of damage and execute enemies before they even had a chance to fight back. While Gale Force was nerfed, it didn't really touch Jin at all since he was using it more for the damage than mobility. That being said, he's still as powerful as ever and his strong laning phase can help you set yourself up for success as early as possible. Overall, Jin is a powerful scaling champion that also provides his team with a nice amount of utility. While Jin does have two different rune pages at the moment, we'll be covering his Dark Harvest one as it's more consistent and hits harder than his Fleet Footwear counterpart. So you're taking Dark Harvest, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Legend Bloodline. Be sure to take Flash and Heal as summoner spells, and you start the game with a Potion Endurance Blade. 
If your versus heavy poke and or just confident in you outranging your opponent, you can actually start with four potions and a pair of boots instead. As for the rest of your items, you'll want to rush Gale Force and then pick up some Swifty Boots, a Collector, Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge, and round out your build with your choice of GA for additional survivability, Lord Dominic's regards for Tank Shred, Mercurial Scimitar for anti-CC, or even a Mortal Reminder if your team really needs the anti-heal. Also, feel free to switch the order of Rapid Fire Cannon and Infinity Edge if you don't really need the additional range versus the enemy comp. Regardless, Rapid Fire will work best in nearly every case, so don't worry too much about this order. And before we get into the rest of the picks, I want to remind you to join our amazing community of Discord of people just like you that love lists and talking about content like this. So check out the link to the Discord in the description down below. We also offer lots of cool stuff for free, as well as some great high elo players in our question and answer sessions. Also, a lot of the 80 carries that we've been covering so far have been a little more skill intensive, so we're going to finish off the list with two easier ones to play. So up next, we got one of the champions that is the first a lot of us played when we joined League of Legends. Ash is well known for her simplicity, as well as her ability to kite champions extremely well. She offers her team a lot of utility, while also being able to hold her own against a lot of meta champs. Overall, if you need someone simple that can be a great team player, Ash is definitely the champ for you. For runes, you'll be taking Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coupe de Gras, Biscuits, and Approach Velocity. Alongside these runes, be sure to take Flash and Heal as your summoner spells, as you'll rarely need Exhaust or Cleanse, but those are both optimal options if needed. You'll be starting the game with a Health Potion and Doran's Blade, and as for the rest of your items, you'll get Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, Blade of the Rune King, and then finish off your build with your choice of Lord Dominic's for Armor Pen, Mortal Reminder for Anti-Heal, or Mercurial Scimitar to cleanse Long Range CC. And last, but certainly not least, we got Sivir. Sivir's yet another champion that everyone has definitely tested out a few times in their journey through League of Legends. Her ability to instantly clear waves, block any ability with her spell shield, and give her team a free Shirelias makes her a force to reckon with. More so, with her lethality build, she's able to wreak havoc from afar without ever having to worry about the enemy getting near her. If you want somebody like Ezreal with a bit more wave clear, Sivir is definitely your girl. While Sivir does have a few builds, we're going to look at her lethality build, which not only has the highest win rate, but it also allows for a far easier and stronger playstyle. Like most AD carries, you're going to want to take Flash and Heal on Sivir. As for runes, you'll want to take Dark Harvest, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. Since with lethality Sivir, you're spamming Q, these runes will make sure that you hit like a truck from far away. You're starting the game with a Potion and Doran's Blade, however, if you're in a safe lane, feel free to start with tears so you can get ahead in your build and work towards a faster mid-game power spike. As for the rest of your items, you'll be building Mana Mune, Lucidity Boots, Duskblade, Sorolda's Grudge, Edge of Night, and then finish off with Mercurial Scimitar, Guardian Angel, or Kempunk Chainsword. Well, that's going to be the top 10 80 carries to abuse for this next patch. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to join the ProGuides family at ProGuides.com or through the link in the description down below to join our Discord. If you like the video, make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, and also hit that bell notification so you don't miss our future updates. That's it for today, though, so best of luck on the Rift, everybody. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you next time. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Okay.